Hello, now a question I get asked a lot is do Israeli filters, these things, fit on Soviet masks like the GP5 with ghost threads? And I've always thought no, because uh, if you go on Shalon's website that makes these filters, it's called the Type 80 filter if you want a technical name for it. Uh, Shalon says Type 80 filters have NATO threads, NATO Stanag threads, RD40 threads, whatever you want to call them. See, this is a ghost thread. On the GP5, as I've said many times before, GOST and NATO threads don't go together very well. Now you can get masks and filters that have normalised threads, like the Polish FP5 has normalised threads, Chinese masks have normalised threads, Israeli masks actually have normalised threads. And what a normalised or standardised thread is, is where the thread's been done slightly differently in either the mask or the filter. And the idea is that it will create a seal with both a GOST and a NATO mask, because the thread's not quite you know, the exact same thing as either of the things. So it's close enough, it will work with both, but not actually, you know, break the seal with either. So, what I want to do is test if there's any logic to people saying I put an Israeli filter on my GP5 and it worked. Um, if it works on this mask, I'll then test it with a couple of other Soviet masks. I'm not going to do a full-on gassing of this video, but what I am going to do is use banana oil to check around the seams of the filter and the uh, filter intake because that's generally where you can always get a smell. And obviously my hair is shaved at the moment, so I'll get a very good face seal of the masks. So anyway, this filter's still sealed. Hopefully the charcoal inside has got some adsorption left in it. Um, this is either made or expired in 2008. I think that's the expiry date. Um, so I'm only opening this because I've actually got some new filters now, because what I tend to do is if I ever buy a mask and it comes with a filter, uh, that's sealed and pretty much in date or only very recently expired what I do is I keep those as actual emergency filters and then I also go through my oldest but safe filters first when I'm doing tests because they're less likely to actually work in a real you know world scenario and then obviously if I manage to get in date you know proper decent filters uh, they're the ones I keep as my um, go to survival filters and then I start working through the older ones again so that's what I'm going to do. It's a bit like if you had food in your cupboard, you'd eat the stuff that's going to be expiring soonest rather than the stuff that's expiring later down the road. So let's open this. I don't know if I'm meant to pull the bottom bit off first. Probably am, actually. Right, that's the bottom section off. Now, as far as I'm aware with Israeli filters, uh, that's the thread if you want to have a good look. It's quite short. Israeli filters are supposedly um, the same thing as American C2 or C2A1 filters. I can't remember which one it is. And then I think they have better ammonia protection because the Israelis really don't spare expense when it comes to um, safety of their troops and civilians. So anyway, let's pop this in and see if we can get it to thread in. If it threads in... Uh, I'll try and thread it in as far as it will go as well. Um, if it does thread in properly and it works, then I'll be quite amazed and I might be able to tell you that yes, you can use Israeli filters with a GP5 or other Soviet masks. Now, an important thing to note there is that the filter's kind of got a bit of a plate there um, and that could be something that makes an airtight seal when it's fully screwed in. The reason being that kind of acts like a block against the sides where because what normally happens on if you put a NATO filter in a Ghost mask is because the threads don't quite line up, you get this area here around the um, screw where air can get in. So let's test it and see if it actually works. Okay, so that's on. It's very tight. Right, it seems to pressurise, but we can't tell for certain until we do the banana oil test. So. Let's test that, so I'll put that underneath the filter first. Right, the filter's working against organic vapour, so despite the fact it's expired, it is stopping organic vapour. Uh, now let's check the uh, screw threads. I think I'm getting a very faint whiff of that, but it is very faint. So what I'm going to do is try this on a couple of other masks, and then I can come to the conclusion whether or not it would work properly. Right, the smell of banana oil is really obvious to me at the moment, because um, 
obviously once you open a canister of banana oil and you're doing that um, when you take the mask off there's still enough of the odour lingering in the air you can smell it quite strongly so next we're going to try the PMG and we'll see if this works at all with this mask because as I said the weird thing is Shalom never claim these to be standardised filters and I, I think some people have said to me they've had weird experiences where they've tried like a load of different NATO filters on Soviet masks and they found one or two types of filters that always work and others that don't and I think that might be as I said down to how long the screw thread is and like what the shape of the screw thread is at the bottom you know in case it kind of acts like a washer but anyway let's try this one Right, I think that's working on this one. So maybe the theory is correct that Israeli filters work on Soviet masks. Uh, let's get another mask out and test it. I'll probably use the SHMS just to be sure. And if it's working with the SHMS, then I'm actually going to go into a confined space and put a load of air freshener in just to really test the seal. Okay, so the SHMS. That screws in really easily to that one. I think there's a bit of um, difference on lots of Soviet masks as well with some of the threads because I've noticed that when I have tried to put NATO filters on some of my uh, Soviet masks some of the time they actually seem to go in fairly easily even if they don't make an airtight seal and other times you really have to force them which would damage the mask so I don't know why the tolerances are a bit different even though they always work fine with Goss filters but that's not really important, let's see if this works Right, okay, so now let's see if we can get a good seal there. Again, yeah, this is a bit awkward because I can't spill the liquid. I'm getting a faint whiff of banana oil of this one. Let me just see if I can get the filter any tighter. Okay, I think that's a bit tighter now, so let's try again. I think I can still smell it. I'm pretty sure I'm getting a very faint whiff of it, but it is quite hard to tell. So, what I'm going to suggest is I'm going to take this mask into the bathroom, and spray a load of air freshener, and see if it works. And then, if it does work, we can come to the conclusion I think that Israeli filters do seem to work with these masks. If it doesn't work, then um, it might actually be that they don't or it's a bit inconsistent. So, I'd still probably advise you never trust your wife on doing something like this, simply because even if the Soviet mask is fine, you don't want to die because there's a slightly dodgy connection here between the mask and the filter. But it certainly seems to work a lot better than I was expecting, and whether or not um, it actually works, you know, like a nuisance vapor thing, you could use it while you're spray painting or something like that, just to not get high off the fumes. Yeah, that might work fine, but anyway, let's uh, take it and give it a proper hardcore test now and see what happens. Right, hopefully you can see me right here. <coughs> so, let's uh, <coughs> give this a test. And I'll tell you in a minute if I can smell it. I think I'm getting a very faint odour through. I am pretty sure that's coming around the seam, not through the filter, because when I put the banana oil directly underneath that and was inhaling deeply, I really couldn't smell anything. And that's like the first thing you'll smell if a filter's not working. Let me just try pressurising again. Yeah, that definitely pressurises, because it pressurises onto my nose and it hurts, but... Yeah, I can definitely get a bit of the oil coming from that. It's very faint. If you had a firm cone, you wouldn't be able to smell it, but the smell is coming through. So, what I think we can conclude is that I know I haven't tested it with a load of Israeli filters and loads and loads of Soviet masks. That would be definitely a more accurate way of doing it. But I think we can come to the conclusion in a pseudo-sciencey way of what my channel does that 
it's not really safe to use Israeli filters on Soviet masks. If you just want the filter for prop use, yeah, it would be good enough. Uh, definitely, it's definitely safe to breathe through these. If you wanted a filter for um, nuisance stuff, just like spray painting, uh, as long as you're only getting a bit of fumes coming through, um, you know, you're just working in a dusty environment, so you'd probably be fine for that as well, as long as it's not like asbestos or anything dangerous, just sort of nuisance dust. Yeah, for that you could just get a GP5, stick an Israeli filter on and it would be fine, but from what I've said before, I think Polish FP5 filters are ones that are meant to be the best normalised filters, because I've never had a problem using the Polish filters from before the FP5s, mask poles, ABE, uh, P3 filters. They always work fine for doing those tests. <coughs> so, yep. I think the fear is most people have that Israeli filters work on Soviet masks, but they simply don't. What I'm just going to quickly do is get an Israeli mask or something, stick this filter on just to check the filter is working and I'm not getting a smell through the filter. So I'll be right back. So at the moment I can definitely smell that, it's quite unpleasant. So <clears throat> let me get this on before I move the camera there for a sure. Sure. Right. No, no smell again, so I think we can safely conclude that the Israeli filters work absolutely fine on Israeli masks, as you'd expect. This filter isn't expired, I'm not sure if I got my chin to last properly there, but there we go. Um, again, when I broke the seal, I did get a whiff of air freshener, but no smell of air freshener now. So, yeah, the Israeli filters definitely work on Israeli masks. Um, I did just interestingly look at the threading, and Israeli filters don't quite seem to look exactly like NATO threads, but they don't look like Ghost threads either, they don't look like other normalised filters. So, I'm guessing because Israeli masks themselves have normalised threads, maybe the Israeli filter is compatible with NATO masks, but they've just altered the threads slightly to work even better with normalised masks. But yeah. With actual Israeli masks, they work fine. They are advertised as NATO threaded filters on Shalom's website, as I said. And um, I would agree with what Shalom say, that they are actually NATO filters, not standardised um, DOS filters. They are good NATO filters, I will say that for them. One of the things I do like is how short the screw thread is, and how the base plate of the filter sits close against the mask. And I think that's why some people have told me Israeli filters have maybe worked with GP5s, because they've either just had a lucky combination where it did work, or it's cut down so much of the smell that if they're not sensitive enough to odours, they wouldn't pick it up. But yeah, certainly with um, trying it with both banana oil and air freshener, I can confirm that at least my Israeli filter does not work with my GP5, um, the SHMS, and the PMG. Obviously it did seem to, but with each of them I thought I got a very slight whiff of odour, and then this test has obviously confirmed that yes, the mask would leak. As I said, it's not entirely useless. If you wanted to use the mask for a nuisance job, or you just didn't want much odour getting through, or dust, then it'd be fine for that, but please, please, please don't try and put an Israeli filter on a GP5, then do something that might risk your life, because you'll probably end up killing yourself if you do that, because again, when it comes to really serious chemical agents, Masks and filters need to have a full airtight fit. It's why positive pressure is actually better for working in really dangerous environments. So yeah, please, please bear that in mind and don't risk your life by shoving an Israeli filter on a GP5 and hoping it will work. Because I don't think it actually will.